Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Bingo, we're back. This is Think Tech. This is Hawaii 808, Energy 808, Hawaii on the Edge. Marco, straighten me out. What's the title of this show? <laughs> Uh, energy, let's see, now you caught me unaware, sir, Jay. <laughs> We're going to look at it, it is Energy 808, the cutting edge, which is Marco and me, and sometimes Mina Marina, on Monday at noon, and uh, welcome to the show, Marco, you're the co-host, so say hi. Say hi, Jay, well, thank you for having me on from uh, wild and wet and woolly and still wainy. Hilo, but uh, apparently the wetness has now migrated to the northern part of the, the island chain, and it looks like Kauai is getting clobbered. But uh, we're still here; we're still bubbling along amongst uh, moisture to uh, to uh, to cause your toes to to web over. But uh, always wonderful to be on with you, Jay, and uh, great to have our our well, guest today. Lord we've got to let you introduce Senior Vice President of Business Development for Hawaiian Electric Company. Wow. Welcome to the show, Shelley. Thank you for having me, Jay and Marco. <laughs> so, Marco, why don't you make more of a you know detailed introduction of Shelley, so people will know exactly what she does over there in Hawaiian Electric. Well, one of the reasons we wanted to have Shelly on is so she could explain herself what she does exactly over there at Hawaiian Electric, uh, Senior VP of uh, Business Development and uh, Strategic Planning, also known as Strategery. So uh, I'd like to uh, give Shelly a chance to introduce herself in terms of how, how you, long you've been at Hawaiian Electric and HEI, uh, what led you to, uh, to make this uh, career choice, and uh, explain a little bit about what you're doing now, please. Yeah, sure. you're one of the most important people in the state. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Lots of more important people than me. Um, but I like that title that you made up there, Marco, Strategery. That's much shorter than the title I have now. It'd be much easier to say. Um, so to answer the first question on what my job is right now, I'm actually Senior Vice President for Business Development and Strategic Planning. Um, strategic planning relates to setting, what we do is we set five-year strategy. So we have a rolling five-year strategy. We update it every year for any changes in circumstances or market. And um, we set metrics for ourselves and goals, and we measure the entire company, and we cascade those throughout our company to make sure we're staying on track. Business development relates to any new business opportunities. So we look at our business in two parts. We have our core business of keeping the lights on, reliable, affordable, clean energy, and we have our new opportunities. And things in there can include demand response, um, our new advanced demand response that we're implementing, community-based renewable energy, which just got launched, electrification of transportation. Um, we've also done some consulting work for other utilities. Um, and we're looking at creating an online energy marketplace. Uh, and there's you know, various other new business opportunities that we're doing our due diligence on and evaluating. All the new initiatives are on your desk. Not all, but many of them, yeah, many yeah. of them. And then I also have renewable acquisition, and that group is responsible for procuring all the utility scale resources. So we do the RFPs, the negotiations, and the contracting, and we um, maintain those contracts over the 20 plus year life of the um, power purchase agreements. Um, and we're busy with that right now because yeah. we're right in the midst of an RFP, three company RFP. And um, I have demand response, which I mentioned earlier. And I think that wraps it up. Those are major things. Exciting those are, those things. Are big things. I think I have a f one, probably one of the funnest jobs. I can say that. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure you're right. Well, you know, planning is always really important. Um, you know, if we're talking about getting to um, you know 2045 or 2040, the case may be for renewables 100 percent. Um, you've got to be really central in that because that's all about planning and implementation of plans. Yeah. yeah, so my group works really closely with Colton Ching's group. Which he's the senior vice president for planning okay. and technology. So on my side, we do the business strategy, the corporate strategy, 
that has to go hand in hand with the planning around our system. So we look at the generation planning, that was the power supply improvement plan, um, our grid modernization planning, um, and that's gonna all come together soon in what we're now calling our integrated grid plan. <laughs> It's a so new things company. continue to evolve. It's a new company because as we talk about these uh, aspirational, you know, goals and 100% um, by 2045 and all that, and all these really dramatic changes you're mm -hmm. talking about, yeah. new initiatives that were really not even thought about five or ten years ago, not even not even thought about. Um, so that means the company has changed dramatically mm -hmm. in the last few years. Can you talk Absolutely. about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a really exciting time for the utility. I think the whole industry is in, an, in a really exciting time. Hawaii in particular, because of our 100% renewable goal um, and because we're an island state. And so we have to look at these challenges very differently than everybody else has to. Um, so in 2014, we received, you know, four DNOs or decision and orders from our PUC that put us on a very tight timeline to take a look at many of these areas. So that summer, I had just started in May in this position, and that summer we needed to create a set of really robust plans um, and filed that with the PUC. So at the end of that, we came out with our strategic plan because we wanted to make sure all the different things we were filing would tie together in a very cohesive way and we're looking at it cohesively um, or holistically. Um, and that plan has evolved over time. Um, to get to, at that time, I can't remember now, what was the RPS back in 2014? Was it 40% by 2030? I can't remember now. Um, but it went from, it you know, some yeah, lower amount to the 100%, and so we had to evolve uh, with that as well. Um, but to make those kinds of changes, it's not only changing what our, our um, generation mix would be, but it's also changing the culture of our company. And that's probably the hardest thing to do. It doesn't happen overnight. That's what Alan said he was going to do. Yeah. He exactly. said that, and I think it's, from my observation, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. There have been, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, we, we got into renewables more. The, the renewables got more sophisticated. The grid became more important. The technology for the grid became paramount to yep. achieving the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time, uh, it was a few years ago, but there was a time when we thought about exchanging electricity between the islands. Yep. That idea is pretty much gone, I think. We're talking about island by island, I think. At this point, we are. I mean, we talk about executing in five-year increments. So within the next five years, we're not looking at that, but we haven't completely you know, thrown out that idea. We never know how cost assumptions may change or technologies may change that may bring things back into the mix as viable mm -hmm. options for us. For a while, we thought about uh, you know uh, making a deal with Nextera. We're not thinking about that right now. Correct. <laughs> For a while, we thought about LNG. We're not thinking about that so much now, although it still remains a possibility, right? Yeah, I mean, you, I think at this time, it's not a very likely possibility. Uh, when we did our long-term planning, the analysis showed that we could get to 100% renewables in a more cost-effective manner if we used LNG as a bridge fuel instead of oil. Mm -hmm. um, but our governor made it very clear he didn't want to go in that direction, and so we're not pursuing those plans at this time. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's, there's been a lot of changes, and uh, uh, Marco, I want to invite you to talk about the, the, um, uh, the changes in, in women. <laughs> That's order. a dangerous question. If you haven't noticed, you know, Shelly is a woman, and there are now a lot of women, more women than there were when you looked at this five years ago, no? So talk about it, well, Marco. I think I'm going to stay away from the generic changes in women. I see that as kind of a slippery slope to places probably we don't want to go right now, Jay. But uh, speaking of women in, uh, and changing the culture and women in energy, you know, traditionally, having been part of the energy field now myself for, for going 40 years, uh, the energy and utilities business is uh, very, very heavily dominated by men, though among Hawaiian Electric execs, there are no fewer than, by my count, seven women uh, that are in uh, key executive positions starting from the top down. Our friend Connie Lau, uh, CEO of uh, Hawaiian Electric Industries, uh, Sharon Suzuki, president of MECO, Susan Lee, uh, senior VP 
for legal at, uh, at Hawaiian Electric, Tane Sekimura, Cecily Barnes, Darcy Endo, Omoto, and you, Shelley. Uh, so my question is, in your experience in the utility business, how unusual is it to have that many women in executive positions? And then the second part of my question is, what difference do you think it has made for Hawaiian Electric to have so many women, which I think is very uh, laudable, so many women in key positions? Yeah, so when I first started doing investor relations for HEI, um, I don't know how long ago that was now, 2009, I think, um, we would go on these investor trips and you'd have um, all the utilities gathered at these conferences to meet with different investors. And um, they would bring their top executives to those meetings. You, as a woman, I felt very much a minority at those conferences. You had all the dark suits all all around, and you could, you know, sp spock out the women, you know, all ten of them or whatever, um, during those conferences. And there used to be a women's group at the conference that they would have every year, and they would invite all the women that were attending the conference because we were such a minority, and they're trying to promote women in energy, and. Connie was the only CEO at that time, um, and she was sort of the pioneer in that respect. And now, I haven't gone recently because I'm no longer in that role, but now I understand, you know, there's so many more women attending these dinners, and there's so many more good examples of women CEOs, which is really great to see. Um, in Hawaii, though, it's been different. We, we've never really been in that situation, at least since I've been at HEI. So I started at HEI in 2004. Um, and um, I think Connie took the helm a few years later. And um, I've never really seen that as an issue in terms of, you know, the number of women in leadership positions. I've never, you know, felt like it was a disadvantage, which is great. Um, and I think as a whole, we all value the diversity, not only men and women, but I mean, it's just, to me, it's the same thing as an engineer and a lawyer and a marketing person. Um, and so you need that diversity around the table to make great decisions, to have great ideas, to have robust conversations. So I think it really is a strength for our company. Yeah, and it's a, it reflects, um, you know, the culture of the state, the ethic of the state. Yeah, I to think be, so. To diverse in every way we possibly can. Exactly, I think so. So, um, you know, the, the other thing is um, planning um, seems to me to wrap around the notion that we live in a completely dynamic climate, as to wit, the last few days here with yeah. Hurricane Lane. And, um, you know, so when you plan, you're planning for extreme weather that you can pretty much predict will be worse and worse until the world figures out how to reduce carbon emissions on a global basis. Um, what's that like? What was it like the last few days? Yeah. What is your planning point going forward? Yeah, so it's a really interesting question because people often say, well, why plan? Because things are just going to change. You don't know what's going to happen. Things are so dynamic. Why even have a long-term plan? Um, but I think Hurricane Lane is a good example. We plan for these kinds of situations. We drill for these kinds of situations because of the critical role the electric company has in a disaster to keep, you know, everything going. It's kind of the backbone of the economy and people's way of life, and also for safety and security. So we take our jobs very seriously, and we plan, and we drill for these kinds of situations. And you never know what may come up. I mean, in this situation, um, you know, we're initially facing a Category 5 hurricane um, that might hit every island, so we needed to be ready across all islands. Um, in the end, it wasn't as bad, yet we still had very severe impacts, and, you know, Marco is feeling the brunt of that, um, or has felt the brunt of that over the weekend. And you add to that, we had fires. We had fires on Maui. We Strange had fires on, of events, right, yeah. on Oahu. Um, and so you adapt from the plan that you had, but you have a base plan. Everybody knows their roles and responsibilities, so you can quickly adapt in those kinds of situations. Yeah, we're going to adapt now for exactly one minute. We're going to have a one-minute break for promotionals and PSAs, and we're going to do this right now. Watch. <laughs>
Okay, we're back. We're back with Marco Mangelsdorf, who joins us from ProVision Solar in Hilo. Very wet now. And uh, Shelly Kimura, who is a senior vice president of business development and planning at Hawaiian Electric. And she's sporting a Sig Zane. Can you talk about the, your Sig Zane Hawaiian Electric outfit here? Yeah. So. Um we created a new logo several years ago. I can't remember how many years, maybe five or so years ago. And um, we worked with Sig Zane, based out of Hilo, and they created the logo for us and they created these shirts for us. And so many of us have these shirts. Um, we can't get them anymore. So it's actually, well, one day will be vintage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's an apple. An original Apple One for sale now still oh, really? works. It's going for a lot of money. <laughs> At the time it was originally on, on the market, it was 600 bucks. Oh. Now it's more like 600,000 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to keep this shirt then. Keep, the, keep it, yeah, don't, don't yeah, hold on to that. You know, and you say uh, the water, the water, in, or rather Hilo. I yeah. used to say that, you know, people from Hilo are really special. Remember Darren Kimura? Mm -hmm. No relation, I'm sure. No, yeah. no relation. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I always used to say that people from Hilo are very innovative. This includes you, Marco. Uh, and it was because of the water. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> what happened with the water may change my mind here. Um, but, okay, so you, planning, planning, you've got, it's not only the weather. It's not only these goals, it's not only the technology, it's not only, you know, changes within the company in terms of, you know, the, the way the company's organized and, and the way it sees things, its approach to things. Mm -hmm. And then you've got political changes, mm -hmm. you've got changes in the customer basis. Base. I mean, you've got so many changes on your desk, I don't know how you can sleep at night. How do you sleep at night, Shelley? How do you deal with all this? <laughs> well, I sleep very well, so that's not the problem, probably because I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> the bigger question is, how do I keep my desk clean because of all the really? things um, on my desk? I actually just spent the weekend cleaning my desk last weekend, not this past weekend, but last weekend. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on, but we have a really good team of people at Hawaiian Electric. Everybody takes a piece of it, and we all know what we're responsible for. Um, on the strategy side, that one's, you know, more fluid, like we talked about. There's so many changes in things that we don't control. So if you look historically, the utility could make a 20-year plan, and as a monopoly, there weren't that many external influences. You still had the regulatory and the political influences. Um, but today, with the market evolving and so many players in energy now, that not only makes the planning more difficult to know how those pieces are going to change and how it affects your business, but it also impacts customer behaviors. And so that impacts how we plan for the future. And then all of that impacts the political and regulatory environment that we have. So it just builds on top of each other and the dynamics and the variables are so great. And I always say we're no longer a true monopoly anymore. We're really a competitive business and that's what we tell our people and that's part of the cultural change that we're going through. We have to think of ourselves as a competitive business. We have to um, not take our customers for granted that they're always going to be our customers. We have to make sure that we are their service provider of choice. And, I, and when I say that, I don't mean between distributed rooftop PV or Hawaiian Electric, because I think it works best when you have both together. Um, but people who are going to go off grid, that I do view as a competitive threat. Mm -hmm. And I also view that as a threat of getting to 100% renewables. Um, one of the biggest challenges we're going to have to get to 100 percent, we have several, but one of the biggest ones is the cost. And we can do it most cost effectively if everyone's connected to the grid, because we can optimize the resources um, when that happens. Yeah, but you know, if, but if you look forward and you know there's going to be new technology, and Sometimes, you know, it may get cheaper, but there's going to be more of it anyway, and you want to you know, acquire it, and, mm -hmm. and you want to keep renewing it, you know, following the, the best technology you can find. Mm -hmm. That costs money. I mean, if you use existing equipment, that doesn't cost so much money. Yeah. But my question is, uh, do people understand, do you think? Uh, there's some, do we have to do something to make them understand that moving toward these goals costs money, and guess what? One way or the other, they have to pay for it. 
Yeah, um, I think that's a really good question. I'm not sure how much people understand about the transition to 100 percent and the many trade-offs and decisions that we need to make along that path. Um, and so one of the things we think about as we look at our strategy is pivoting from being very utility-centric in terms of what the engineering solutions are to get to 100 percent and turning outward and making sure that we have a good understanding of where our communities are at, what's important to them, and trying to make sure we weave that in to our path to 100 percent. And while we're doing that, we can help our communities better understand what choices we need to make and what the trade-offs are. Mm -hmm. You know, I've noticed one thing in the past few years, I mean, in, in, your, um, in your last five, say, at Hawaiian Electric, um, is that the, the conversation with the community is different. Mm -hmm. The tone of it is different. The players are different. Yeah. Their attitudes, you know, in getting, you know, stakeholder attitudes as expressed to the utility and to the government and the government, you know, all the people talking together, everybody talking together. That conversation right now, I think, is pretty mellow. That conversation is creative. That conversation is more constructive than at some points in the past. Mm -hmm. um, that conversation is, in fact, planning, isn't it? It's a kind of community planning, and that must yeah. all wind up on your desk somehow, because you've got to, you've got to listen to them, and you've got to explain to them, and you've got to have this kind of interactive relationship, and we are special in that way, because that's the, that's the Hawaii way of doing a kind of consensus planning model, right? Yes, I agree. Hawaii is special in that way. Um, I think in part because we're smaller, but also in part because we're very relational and we recognize how everything is interconnected. I think when you live on an island, you quickly see how everything is interconnected. And um, you're right, we have changed in the way that we interact with stakeholders and communities. We're very more transparent, much more transparent. Um, and I think it helps that if you take a step back, I think people are realizing we're all trying to get to the same place. We're all trying to achieve the same ultimate goals. It's really how we go about doing that. So once we have that general understanding that we all have the best interests of our state in mind, then the conversations get much easier. And then you're just talking about issues and facts and analysis um, and how you're going to be able to get there. Yeah, related to that, I, I see another thing, too. I see conversations, uh, and this is not only Hawaiian Electric, I see conversations uh, among, among Hawaiian Electric and KIUC, uh, between uh, Hawaiian Electric and utilities on the mainland. I see a national conversation yeah. among utilities everywhere yes. where, where they're sharing information, they're sharing suggestions, they're, they're sort of consulting and sharing and, mm -hmm. what's the word, caring for each other. Um, if I can use that term, uh, more than they have been in the past. Do you see that? It's funny you bring that up. We just came, me, uh, Colton Chang, Scott Sue, um, Brennan Morioka, several of us um, were at a conference last week and we had to come back early because of the storm. But this was the EPRI electrification conference. EPRI is the um, Electric Power Research Institute. And um, there were 1,700 people there. Many utilities represented. Yeah, it was huge. And this was the first conference that they've had. So what that told me is that electrification is a, a big trend and a big movement um, going forward, because many people across the nation and many industries are recognizing that electrification is much more efficient when you look at the total energy picture. Um, and as we move, the entire nation moves to more and more renewables, well, hopefully the entire nation continues <laughs> to move to more and more renewables, um, that electrification just gets cleaner and cleaner, right? So it was, right, um, so it was very encouraging to see the level of interest in this inaugural conference that they had on this sure, topic. there'll be more. There'll be more. And um, on your point on learning from each other, I mean, this is a national conference, and Hawaiian Electric was on three panels. So I was on one, Colton was on, Brennan was on one. And um, we learn a lot from the people that you know were speaking and the speakers, but I think people are also looking at Hawaiian Electric on what we're doing. 
And that's also why um, people are hiring us from a consulting perspective to help them figure out some of the issues that we've had to face and figure out and they're now having to figure out after us. Because we have challenges, we learn from the challenges, uh, and we become a leader yeah. in the national inquiry on uh, best practices. On certain yeah. topics, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, how much of this do you agree with, Marco? Uh, <laughs> I'll say all of it. Uh, uh, no, I think uh, what Shelley's shared makes a lot of sense, and I, I know we're kind of winding down time-wise, and I wanted to kind of follow up on something you mentioned earlier, Shelley, which is uh, you folks at Hawaiian Electric, Hiko, Hako, Miko, have your hands full uh, right now in terms of evaluating uh, a number of uh, proposals for multi-megawatts of renewable energy across your service territories, and if I recall correctly, the deadline for you to announce the winners is September 17th. Yep, you got it. Do you anticipate, I'm oh, sorry? You got it, you're correct. Do, do I do, should we anticipate that uh, uh, you all will wait, Hawaiian Electric will wait until that very last day to announce who uh, the winning bidders are, or would it be possible you think that we'll find out a bit sooner? Well, I don't want to jinx us. Um, so we we have the seven the September seventeenth date as our deadline, uh, but we are trying to select sooner than that. Um, we're working with our internal teams as well as the independent observer that um, was hired by the PUC to oversee this process, and so we're trying to get through that process as quickly as possible particularly for Hawaii Island and the, the situation mm. that we're in there because the of PTV, yeah, geothermal. Yeah. Well, I, well, you I know, appreciate that. go ahead, Marco. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be very interesting to see. I know the, the commission, the PUC back in June uh, made clear their preference for uh, renewable energy uh, plus storage, uh, as our friends at Hawaiian Electric, uh, or excuse me, at KIUC have been uh, going uh, with great gust over the past several years. So I'm really uh, very gonna, as so many of us, are gonna be very curious to see what uh, what the winning bidders uh, will be at in terms of price points. I'm gonna estimate and guess that it's gonna be somewhere around 10 cents a kilowatt hour for these power purchase agreements, uh, hopefully with plenty of storage and uh, that we can lock in, uh, we can you know, definitively continue to move away from avoided cost contracts, which were, effectively banned uh, by the legislature and signed by Lingle 12 years ago in 2006, and that uh, we will continue to make great strides to nailing down long-term power purchase agreements, which will be renewable energy, not at all cost, but renewable energy uh, that's cost effective. So I, I applaud what, what you all are doing there, Shelley, and your great team. Uh, Thank so, you for that. Uh, yeah. So when we make our selections and we announce um, pricing, we can compare notes at that time. But until <laughs> then, I can't say much about the process just to preserve the integrity of the process. But yes, we're very excited. It's the largest um, procurement we've done um, ever. Um, and the total amount we're trying to get by 2022 is over 300 megawatts. So it'll be wow. huge. So I have a question that sort of wraps up on both sides of your, of your job. One is the business development and the other is the strategical planning. Um, so, you know, a few years ago, not too many, uh, Hawaiian Electric was, it was this, the, the hub in the, in the wheel and it sent electricity out from its various yeah. generation plants. It, it didn't take anymore. much back, yeah. it sent it all out. And uh, that was simple, because it was a one-way direction on everything. Yeah. Well, now we're not in one way anymore. Now it's much more complicated, not only technologically, but logically. I mean, <laughs> you know, trying to figure out conceptually what we're doing and what's going in what direction and how you solve the need in the community. And so yep. the business model, the, 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 the range of activities in business that you would do it has to be changing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what your thought is on, on where the utility winds up with this. I mean, people were saying for a while, well, the utility is, is, is a conduit. We just, we take it from one side, we give it to the other side. But it's not that simple. <laughs> yeah. How, how, do you, how do you see this so, working out? Yeah, so I think one of our core responsibilities and roles as we move forward is to be um, that integrated grid platform. And what that means is that 
on the physical side and the operational side, just as you're describing, we have to make sure we're like air traffic controller for what direction the, utility, uh, the electricity is going, um, who needs it when, when the peaks are, making sure that all the disparate pieces are working together. Because instead of having, say, you know, six power plants, we now have tens of thousands of individual power plants in addition to the utility scale that we have to orchestrate so that it all works together. Yeah. So that's a, a key function of the utility. Um, the other part of it is the transactional platform, right? If, if customers are going to be providing energy and services to the grid, what is that worth? And what should we be paying customers? And what is it worth to the customer to be connected to the grid and have all the services and reliability of being connected to the grid? And figuring out what that trade of value is, is part of the challenge as we move forward. And that's not an easy answer, but we're taking initial steps in that as we look at our uh, distributed energy resources docket. Um, we're moving into the, the market track and also what we're doing in demand response. So we're somewhat dipping our toe in, in the water in demand response as we set valuations for grid services. And also we're creating um, almost like a PPA contract, a per purchase power agreement contract for demand response aggregators. Mm. Um, and that's one way that you know we'll try and figure out how we move into this future. But I think what you're, gonna, what you're hearing me say is a lot of this is iterative. We have to try things um, on a small scale, which is different from our history and our mindset in the past, um, and then iterate on it and then scale from there. Hmm. Well, clearly, more and more, you're kind of an electric, electronic clearinghouse, uh, which you know, you're becoming, and you will become to a larger extent, uh, a, a technology company, mm -hmm. um, you know, organizing and yep. transmitting and um, clear, being a clearinghouse for electrical products, electrical energy. Yep. The question is, going forward, now you're a private company, yep. and you're likely to stay a private company in the, pretty much the same form for as long as all three of us will live. Um, but but the question is, others you, might have a different opinion. But I know I know Marco, you can comment on this. <laughs> <laughs> but are you be bigger? Or are you going to be smaller? Is your staff going to say the same size, get bigger, get smaller? Are your stockholders, uh, you know, uh, how are they going to do? Um, do you need more space or less? Uh, do you need more yards and equipment or less? Well, how do you see the size of the company changing because of the changed role in the in the, in the business? The, you know, dynamic going yeah. forward. I think roles will be different. They'll transition. Um, I don't know about counts per se, but I think as we transition, we're looking at how we retool our workforce to be able to take on the new roles and the new um, skills and talents that we need in our business. Um, what else did you add? Oh, shareholders. So I think. As we look over the next five years, we have significant investments we need to make in our grid to get to this future. Um, so from that perspective, I think that we're on a, a sustainable track there. It's not um, overly aggressive, but I think it's competitive in terms of us being able to still attract investors, because mm -hmm. that's really key for us to fund all this investment that we need to make in our grid. Exciting! Yeah, wow! Very exciting. Great. Okay, Marco, you can you can comment on that and uh, and then close and make sure well, you thank usual, Shelley. I, as usual, I think we just barely scratched the surface. We could uh, go on with this lovely trio of you two dear people and then myself. Uh, I think for for considerable uh, longer than we have. So. Uh, I won't get into anything more substantive, but uh, I think it's uh, just fantastic you've been able to join us today, Shelley, and I hope you can come back for uh, round two and uh, just continue this really fascinating discussion about what you do, what Hawaiian Electric is doing, the very interesting, dynamic, turbulent sometimes in the energy environment that, uh, that we all are either a participant uh, and or observer. So um, thank you so much for joining us today, Shelley. Thanks, Marco. I enjoyed being here. Thank you, Thank Shelley. You, Jay. Shelley Kimura, Senior Vice President of Business and, uh, and strategy Planning and Strategy going forward at Hawaiian Electric. And I can only leave you guys with one thought. <clears throat> Never take the utility for granted. When you wake up in the morning and turn on the switch and the light comes on, 
Think of Hawaiian Electric. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Unless you. you're in Kauai. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. Thanks so much.